Hey guys, Krista here from Davey and Krista. And in this video, I'm going to teach you how to turn your handwriting into a custom font that you can use on your website, on Canva, and really anywhere that you can use a custom font. There are a lot of different websites out there that can actually help you turn your handwriting into a font, but an easy one and a popular one. And the one that I'm going to talk you through today is one called Calligrapher. They actually have a free version of this software that you can use. It's all online. You download some templates and then you upload them, but you don't get as many characters as you would really need to create a full font of uppercase and lowercase letters and all of the punctuation. I think I paid like $8 to upgrade my service for a month and I was able to do a couple of different fonts and include a lot of characters. And so if you are going to go through this process, I think it's probably worthwhile to pay that $8 and upgrade your account to do a more premium font. So I'm going to start by creating a template. So we'll go to create a template and this is where you're going to select the characters that you want included. It looks like right now I have a lot of the different punctuation in here. I have numbers, I have uppercase letters and lowercase letters, and I could also come down here and add extended punctuation, which I recommend doing, um, and mathematical numbers. If you need some mathematical numbers, I don't think I need this many. I'm going to delete a few of these because I know I'm not going to need all of these signs, but I do want to keep some things like the percentages and the dollar sign, um, maybe some fractions, etc. because I know in a lot of cases when I'm typing out different content, those are ones that I need. Once you're happy with the characters that you've selected and you kind of have your bases covered for your font, we are going to download the template. So I'm going to download this as a PNG and I'm going to draw characters in the background because I think that it is a good format for figuring out the size of your characters. So here's my template. I'm going to download it. I'm going to open it up and I'll show you what these look like. So this example that I am creating right now sent me two different PNGs that I need to fill out. So here's one with all of my uppercase and a few punctuation and lowercase letters. And then here's the rest of my alphabet along with additional punctuation letters. There are two ways that you can fill this out. You could either print out these different documents and then scan them or even take a photo with your phone as long as it's like a clear overhead shot in good light. And then we'll take that over to Calligrapher in a little bit and I'll show you that soon. Um, or you could airdrop these to like an iPad Pro if you have an iPad Pro and we can use something like Procreate to do the lettering. I'm actually gonna go that route because I think it gives more, more options and more like wiggle room in the illustrations and I feel pretty comfortable with an iPad pen, but if you feel more comfortable with like a marker or some sort of like thicker instrument um, on paper, like definitely go that route. I do wanna note though that the first time we did this, we used a regular pen on a piece of paper and then we scanned them in and those characters felt really thin and really light. So if I was gonna do this the printed and scanned way, I'd probably choose a thicker like pen or even like a thin marker just to make sure that the characters are really clear and distinguishable once they're scanned in and then turn into a font. For now though, I'm gonna airdrop these to my iPad by clicking on share, and then I will click on airdrop, and I'll, I take them over to my iPad, and then I'm gonna pull my iPad and show you what I do. I'm gonna use the Procreate app for this project because I think it's gonna give me the most control, and I love the different pens that it includes in the design just like automatically. So I'm gonna start by bringing these images. So I'm gonna click on this mechanical tool right here, and then I'm gonna click add and I'm going to insert a photo and I'm gonna insert one of these images that I just created online. And I'll make it a little bit bigger and a little bit more even so it fills the space better and gives me a little bit more room to work. And once I'm happy with the placement, I'm gonna do it again. So I'm gonna to go to layer two and I'm gonna insert the other photo that we created with the other characters for the swamp. So I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger and straighten it out and commit it. And then I'm gonna add a couple different layers. So I'm gonna add one layer above layer two and I'm gonna add another layer above layer one. And I'll start by working on these top layers right here. So I'm gonna work the design in layer three and I wanna select my pen tool. I'm gonna to give it a dark black color. And then within the pen tool, I think that the studio pen is kind of a nice one to work with, but 
Um, the technical pen is also nice and there are a ton of different brush strokes in here. So you might just kind of play around and see which ones work best with your handwriting and your font and the aesthetic that you're going for. For now, I'm going to click on studio pen and then I'm going to come over here. And then these settings are where I can adjust the opacity, which I would leave the opacity at hundred and the size. So far, I've noticed in doing this that I kind of have to adjust the sizing a little bit for my hand and the way that I write because it's different than the way my husband writes. When we did his font, we noticed that he puts a different amount of pen pressure on his writing. And so I think we had to make his a little bit smaller and we had to make mine. Once you have a pen that you're happy with, that you like the way that your handwriting generally looks in the font, you can start writing in all of the numbers and the letters. So I'm going to make sure that I'm clicked on my layer three and I'm gonna start just filling in the different characters of this font. And nope, I don't like that zero. Oh, I went too far. And we want them to be approximately the size and the space that we see them as these like grayed out areas. So five, equals question mark ampersand and one of the nice things about using the iPad for this is that if you have a character that you don't love like let's say I want to redo my ampersand I can go in and just remove that or I could go in and just remove the second stroke of this equal sign and then go back and redraw it so maybe something like that. Once I filled out this whole sheet, I wanted to do the same thing on the other sheet. So I'm gonna turn off these layers just for a minute and I'm gonna turn on this layer one and I'm actually gonna do another layer right here since I don't know what that one is. And we'll do layer five and then I could start doing these letters right here and I would wanna go through and fill the whole thing in. Once I've drawn all of my characters and I'm happy with the way that they look, I'm then gonna take them back to my computer. So I'm gonna go to this little um, tool again and I'm going to click on share and I'm gonna export this as a JPEG and we're gonna go right back to my MacBook and I'll wait for it to accept and then I'll click on done. And then I'm gonna turn the other layers on so that I get both sets of characters. So. We'll share this as a JPEG. It's gonna go back to my computer again. And there we go. And then we're gonna hop back over to my computer for the next part. Once you have your drawings back on your computer, I'm gonna go to my fonts and I'm gonna create a new font. So I'm gonna give this a name as Krista Test and I can adjust some of the letter spacing or font size or word spacing here, but I can also fine tune those later in the process. If you wanna get really fancy, you could also put in different metadata. So if you wanted to do different versions of your font and have a bold version, an italic version, a bold italic, or add any copyrights in, although I think those are settings that you only get access to if you're doing the premium version of Calligrapher. For now, I'm gonna click on save and then I'm gonna upload my template. So. I'm gonna come in and I need to select one of my templates. So here is one and it's gonna automatically clean up the templates and so I'm gonna hit upload. And if I like these characters, I can add them to my font. But if for some reason I take a look at this and I notice that I think I would need to redo the A or redo the K, I could always trash one of these, later, these letters and then re-upload another sheet just with that letter K and it'll replace it. So I'm gonna add these characters to my font and then I'm gonna upload one more template because I did two different pages. And so here's my other version. These are actually my husband's letters, but it's fine. And we're gonna let process and then I'm gonna add them to my font. And so then I can come in and I can start to build my font. So I'm gonna click on process and this is gonna give me a preview of what it looks like. And so. I can then determine if I wanna tweak any of the letters. Like for example, I don't know that I love the way that the O looks and how it has that top part of the tail. So I'll show you how I would clean up that in a minute. And I might also tighten the letters just a little bit. 
This is also going to give me a size comparison of what the characters that my husband drew look like in relation to different fonts. So on the left is going to be a serif, on the right is a sans serif. It looks like it's maybe Helvetica. Just so you can compare the like overall size and width of your letters to a different, like maybe more professionally drawn font. Let's close that and then I'll show you how I can clean up these letters as well. So for example, if I don't love this four and I want to clean it up a bit, I can come in here and I can actually edit the characters in Calligrapher. So I can zoom in on this four and I can switch my brush to be a smaller brush and I can make it an eraser. And if I didn't like the tail in this four, I could just use my mouse and kind of clean that up a bit. I could also draw. So if I untoggle the eraser, I could draw, let's see, I could make his, I'm going to be really bad at doing this just with my, my trackpad on my computer, but I could draw this four and make it go a little bit like of a longer tail in the crossbar. Once I'm happy with the way it looks, I can zoom out and then I can save it and close it. Within each character, I can also adjust the spacing. So one thing you might notice if your characters have a lot of space on either side, you might need to crop kind of like the frame that each one is in. So we could tighten this up so that it goes either further out or it comes closer to the number four, which would help the letter appear closer to other ones. And then I can click on save. I can also adjust how this character appears on the baseline. So the baseline is going to be this line right here and that kind of determines if it's up or if it's down so um like this this bracket right here if i click on it it might benefit from going up a little bit so i can actually bump it up a few smidges and that'll help the bottom of the the character appear on the same line as the z i can do the same thing with this one it looks like it might benefit from going up a little bit but this slash right here could go down a little bit. And if I notice, for example, that like this guy should be bigger, I can also adjust the size a little bit and then bump it up. So um, it's not like you can't get as detailed as maybe some other font editing software, but you can actually get pretty detailed and I think you can make a decent font from this. So once you're happy with your, your character, we can click on save and go back to my font. And then you can kind of just go through and see what your characters look like, clean them up, adjust the baseline, adjust the spacing, and replace any ones that you think that you need to be replaced. Once we're happy with our font, we can click on build, and then it'll process it again. I get a fresh preview here, and then I can download the font as both a TTF file and an OTF file. So I can add them to my computer by double clicking on them. And here's my font preview, it looks really cute. And I can click install and I can also use it on any software on my computer like Adobe Illustrator, or I could upload it to the internet to a tool like Canva or even a website building platform like Show It. All right guys, I hope that this tutorial was helpful. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. And if you wanna get updates about future videos that we release, make sure that you subscribe to this channel. Thanks.